Right then, so this is back to the rest of Comic Corner. These are fucking gold. Um, so Chris Hart. Uh, this is some of these are just funny. Some of these, and I'll make it clear which ones are which. So Chris Hart says it is more or less one tooth extra on the front. In most cases, is worth five mile an hour at the same RPM. Eh, I don't agree with that whatsoever. One depends which bike, stuff like that. If that was the case, then you'd have a 600 tooth front sprocket. Um, and then you'd be basically going faster than the speed of sound. Um, so this is Lacey Kyle at the workshop. That noise was nothing to do with the problem you had been experiencing. This is about the Z900. You were spinning... Oh, that's when we were spinning the wheel. You were spinning the wheel up at the beginning of the video with nothing but a bit of dragging on the pads, so this new noise was most likely to be something you had introduced. For someone who likes to expound best practices, you don't like being picked, on, picked up on stuff, do you, Matt? I know someone else like that. So the fact of the matter is, is that the noise was intermittent. And yes, the noise was the crash bars, but this is the problem with noises, and I get loads and loads of emails, loads and loads of videos of people playing me noises. And one of the problems with noises is like this, is that when you're riding along, you've got a helmet on, there's loads of wind, stuff like that. This only kicked in about 5,000, 5,000 RPM. Usually I'm going at a decent pace, and the wind, I can't fucking hear anything. And it was intermittent. And the thing is, when I pulled the brake, the noising stopped. That's usually because when I heard the noise at 4,500, pull the brake, she slows down below 4,500, and the noise goes away. So I was using what I could, you know, using my senses as I was riding the road. Sounded like it was the left-hand side. It was the left-hand side. Sounded like when I dropped below a certain speed or applied the brakes, which was reducing your speed. The other thing is this. I panic first thinking it's brakes because brakes save your life. That's all I care about. I then looked at the brakes because I wanted to look at the brakes and then thought, oh, it's not that gravy. Good. I am more worried if it's not a brake noise. That's why when I found out it wasn't that, I was like, oh, we're just going to have to find out what this noise is. It's definitely not an engine noise because engine noise is usually a lot deeper because oil, a lot of mass, stuff like that. This was an exterior ringing that was really quite high pitched here. You could hear it behind yeah, me, couldn't you? It was fucking loud as hell. Yeah, so when you were going on at a decent pace, and because you're behind me, and you I've can got hear. And loud exhaust in my ear as well. I could still hear the. Like, it was like a ringing. Yeah, it exactly. Was... So I was, like I say, if it's the brakes first, that's the first thing I'm worried about. After that, you know what I mean? The other thing is, he says, that noise has nothing to do with the problem you had been experiencing. Well, if you fucking knew what it was, and he put, basically posted this before I found out what it was, then fucking tell me what you were cunt. <laughs> you didn't know what it was, because no one knew what it was until I fucking found it. Yeah. Next one. This is Oliver's Auto Service. He says, 51 years of automotive knowledge versus 18-year-old. Laugh out loud. Okay, Englishman, you're a right genius. Huh. This is about the Scotty Kilmer um, putting compression push fittings on fucking brake lines. Yeah, good one, man. Dude, fucking love it. Oh, Dave Macaroni. Brilliant one. So this is about fractured conrods. So snapping um, the conrod cap off the conrod. Dave Macaroni puts, fuck off bullshit, snapping a conrod to lock it. Them together, no way. I am Peter Pan. Tinkerbell, I think you've been sniffing too much fairy dust. So he didn't believe that these conrods, I went through this big argument with him, that they snap conrods, he just thought that was make-believe, which is quite good, Dave, I like it. This is another guy saying, uh, this is David, I think we've also covered this uh, comment in a video, but fuck it, it's in here anyway. David says, sorry you lost me, you have lost me, this is not an engine rebuild, but just a teardown of an old tired engine. The engine is all tech and it's from a bike that has no value. There is nothing to be gained here. I'll check back when you have something more interesting on the go. Um, so I snuck into Dave's house and strangled him to death. <laughs> so he's not going to see any more videos. But apart from that, um, yeah, I think I went through this about the whole new tech, old tech thing. 
crankshafts, pistons, conrods, gears, gearboxes, stuff, they really haven't changed. And like a lot of people said in reply to that video, what do you want to do, take a brand new fucking R1 engine apart? I would, but I can't afford to do that. Who can? Uh, Why would you? You know, it would be good to see things like that, but uh, maybe one day, who knows? Maybe one. Um, but yeah, all tech. Conrods, crankshafts, bolts, gears, haven't changed in a long time. And it, to that point, if you cracked open a new R1, you'd go, oh yeah, conrod, crankshaft, piston. Piston's a bit, it has some features, you know what I mean? But apart from that, meh. Uh, big Bad Lone Wolf. Now, I do like this guy's comments, but I just want to, this is a stupid comment he made, which was a nice kick in the tits. Uh, I was talking about Harpic. And he put, what the fuck has happened? Oh no! What the fuck happened there? Oh, I fucking hate phones. Where were we? Oh yeah, so Big Bad Lone Wolf puts caustic sword here. That's caustic soda. Caustic, <laughs> caustic soda is sodium chloride, NaCl. Hydrochloric, <laughs> hydrochloric acid is hydrogen chloride, HCI. I'll just leave that as it is. <laughs> you just can't say anything to that. So this is uh, Chirana... Theodore. Yes, that one. This is on the Scott Euler What I Think. So, those of you who weren't aware, Scott Euler contacted me out of the blue. They said, Do you want some FS uh, fucking shit 365 days of the year? I said, Yes, please. They said, Do you want a V. I think it's a V something, a V. Scott Euler V Pro Max. Some stupid wank name. Yeah. Um, they gave me one for free. And. I didn't ask for it, they said about the, like I said, they just contacted me out of the blue saying do you want to review it? I did a video going, I don't I don't like these, I don't agree with them, I think they're fucking shit. If you want it, you can have it for free, so I gave that shit away. So this block puts, it increases power transfer to the road, not engine power. It what? Just run your chain dry and see. Industrial chains use these kind of systems for ages because they need it. Right, let's get to that. It increases power transfer to the road, not engine power. Yes, because your engine makes road power and engine power. <laughs> you know when you thing. cut your engine off but the power's still generated because of power transfer to the road? Whatever that is. Um... Just run your chain dry and see. Motorbike racing, they do that all the time. And that's one of the favourite things, isn't it? Is saying, is Valentin Rossi's chain going to snap on lap one or lap two? Because they won't last very long. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, test one, two, three. I do love this guy because he's, he's got a fucking bone on for me. He already, we've already been through this, but it just belongs in here, just in case you haven't seen it. He, so we're talking about um, Isaac, it was the Isaac Master of Suzuki video when we're starting the SV project. He says, change the twin exhaust for a single one, yes, because you know better than the people who made the bike and decided to use two pipes. Then we went on to go and say, he was like, what, so uh, Suzuki just put two exhausts on it for aesthetics? Yes. <laughs> My, uh, 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 such a good, a good, good comment name, his avatar name is, my opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> that's literally his name, that's not what he wrote. <laughs> and he goes, you're confusing and EE, so engineering explained, the engine design has nothing to do with its chemistry. Oh, it has nothing to do with it, it's chemistry. Can what this is about. Oh, this is about lean burning. He goes, the combustions are hottest at stoichiometric... 14.7 to 1 but the maximum power is at 12.6 to 1 so all above 12.6 is called lean because it gives less power and the temperature is increased 
as it gets closer to the AF of 14.71 where combustions are hottest. That's why lean increases temperature. No, you're wrong. But anyway, uh, there's nothing much more to say to that. So Mr. Viking says, your constant swearing makes you sound dumb. And your science conforms to it. What? The science conforms to being dumb. Or oh, the science proves that I am dumb? Oh, okay, we'll go with that. Good fucking riding your bike and leave science to others. He just swore to me. Oh no, go fucking gone. ride your bike. Yeah, I love this, and this is why I put this in. Because they say, your constant swearing sound makes you dumb. And then within two sentences, he swears anyway. But he puts a no instead of a you, so that's not really swearing, is it? Dumbass. <laughs> Martin Barr. This is Isaac, now on Grinder. Good video. How's it going on Grinder, anyway? Fuck off. So it's going well. So it's not going well. Angles, mate. Which one's it going on? Neither. What, so it's just near? You're not, getting fucked and then you're not... Not, not on Grinder. Yes, you are. No. You are now, because I've put you on it. <laughs> That's not me, is it? I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description to Isaac's grinder page. Fuck off. It's a pet hate of mine not having the guard on an angle grinder. So basically, he's talking about that. The guard is here. Yeah. Sooner or later it will bite you. You also shouldn't be teaching people to use it without the guard. If you can't get something with a guard fitted, it's the wrong tool for the job. Are my hands still here? <laughs> I believe so. Shut up, shut up. I think, up, I think, up, I think I'm alright. Shut up, Isaac. I think I'm alright. You you actually do need the guard, to be quite yeah, honest. Yeah, to be honest, I think maybe when I use it, put the guard on. Because he did ask for it. I told him to stop being such a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but regardless this whole gar grinding with guards are not your motorcycle doesn't have a guard right people have been doing stuff without health and safety stuff for many many a year probably the house that you are living in right now was built with laxed health and safety now don't get me wrong about health and safety right there are times when it's usually when there's an unknown to it so when I'm fucking around with acid or something like that, I will have gloves on and usually safety glasses or a face shield. Usually a face shield when I'm fucking around with acid. Because something splashing and splashing in your eye, shit that happens all the time when I'm trying to control something like water. You know what I mean? You're doing the dishes and fucking you get a bit on the face or something. You know what I mean? With an angle grinder, I am... And usually when you get splashed in the face by things, it's because you're not paying attention. You know, you watch a lot of porn. Right, them girls get it in the eye because they're not paying attention. Right, but um, <laughs> stop fucking laughing. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's it's your own choice. The fact of the matter is, is I have with angle grinders is the guard gets in the way, and I spend half the time fucking around with the guard Thank than you. actually getting on with what I'm fucking doing. And to me, the longer you are exposed to using something like a ro massively rotating tool, so on and so forth. Same thing with any rotating things and gloves. I don't like the idea. They're sparks. Your fucking hands will live. Stop being a fucking pussy about it. But it's agency. I choose to do that. Craig from On Your Bike chooses to do that. Not. You watch even stuff like American Chopper, which went out to hundreds of millions of people. They choose to drill without glasses or angle ground without glasses or whatever. And it is your it's agency. It's your own choice. Um... But it says, you also shouldn't be teaching people to use it without a guard. Right, this is what teaching would look like. Right, so you take your guard and you remove it. This is what you should be doing. Right, all grinding work should be, doing, should be done without a guard. That would be teaching it. Right, that would be teaching it. I'm just using an angle grinder in the background or in the video. That is not teaching people. Um... There are bad practices and seriously, there's, there's a difference between bad, bad practices and stupid practices. So, um, you know, the guard is one, removable, you know, you can get this off. And, you know, that button, 
That interlock button there is a, in a sense like a safety feature, you know what I mean? You have to hold that and hold that so she fires off. That's a safety feature that you'd have to modify the tool, properly modify the tool to stop it doing that. Um, people all across the industry use grinders without guards on, stuff like that. And people do get bitten by them, don't get me wrong, they do. But I am not teaching people to do that. Sticking a fucking drill or an angle grinder in a vice, <laughs> that is dangerous. Why? Because this angle grinder or any other gr angle grinder or drill has an interlock or it has a trigger and it also is ergonomically designed for you to put in your hand. This is a handle, not a vice clamp. This is a handle, not a vice clamp. This body isn't even fucking meant, you're not meant to stick your fucking hands on it full stop. You know what I mean? It's like these these little holes in here for your fucking spanner, that locking spanner, that ring the locking spanner that goes in there. They are not designed for you to put your tongue in, right? If I saw someone putting the tongue in there, I'd say that's fucking stupid. Just like putting a drill and clamping it in a vice. If it was designed to be if you had an electric motor with an angle grinder head in a casing with a flange on it to stick in a vice, that would be fine. But you're talking about a plastic casing. Right, that can flex and stick in it in a vice. That's fucking stupid. And he's not teaching anyone to do that, but it's just fucking stupid. <laughs> and that's what we were laughing at, how fucking stupid it is. Regardless. Uh, oh, 125. The 125 video. This was, can you make a 125 faster? Um, load of shit. Uh, uh, what a load of shit. This is Jock Jones, man. Want to make your 125 bigger? No, faster knobhead. Get a bigger carb or bore the head and buy a bigger piston. You bore the cylinder. Either way works and sometimes you can find a restrictor on the exhaust. So few ways to make your 125 faster that doesn't involve running behind it, pushing it down a hill. Um... If you have a big ball kit, it's not a one two five anymore, is it, you fucking dickhead? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. This is from the Harley Davidson video. I love Harley, the Harley Davidson video. The comments in there, if you've got a spare hour and, you, and the power's gone out and you've only got your phone or something, read the comments to the um, Harley Davidson video. It's entitled Harley Davidson's a shite. It is amazing. Uh, Archaic says the man smoking roll-ups which need relighting every 30 seconds. That's because I'm talking and not smoking. Get some fucking tailor-mades and get modern. <laughs> oh, they still... <laughs> forget it. Just I'm, forget not, it. I'm not even going to go down that road. It's called cheaper. Now you could say the same thing about Harley Davidson's. you got a Harley Davidson and say that's roll-ups. And you could say an R1 or fucking even anything, a Z9 or something, that's tailor-made. But the fact of the matter is, is your archaic Harley is a way more expensive <laughs> than your tailor-made. Idiot. Um, I have a Harley. Really? Who would have guessed? <laughs> Amongst my other bikes in brackets. And it rides like shit, but fuck it, but fuck it makes me smile. That's fine. A lot of people didn't realise the Harley Davidson thing was a joke. It, there's jesting to it, you know what I mean? It cost me five grand. Oh. Your generic platitudes make you sound like Del Boy. Nothing but nothing sounds or feels like a Harley. Nothing but nothing sounds like a Harley. It says sounds or feels like a Harley. Take the exhausts off the SV. A Harley. It's not a Harley, but it's not far off. You sort the exhausts out on a V Max. Sounds pretty much like a Harley. Feels like it. I don't like the feeling of a giant vibrator that I paid five grand for. But it's up to you. A sofa with wheels, that's what I said, rides a pre rubber mounted sporty and says it's a sofa. I love your stuff, but this video makes you sound like a twat. All good. I get it. That's fine. I'll take that. Midlife crisis. You are only a boy. R1 wank. Who wants to ride a crotch rocket? 
I've been riding for 39 years, longer than you have been alive, so shut the fuck up. I get that that you've been riding longer than I, probably longer than I've been alive. That's all good. That's all fine. That's all gravy. That doesn't make your opinion any more prevalent than anybody else's. Everyone's opinion is exactly the same. Zero. How can right? you have a midlife crisis if you're a boy? No, I said it was a midlife crisis. Oh. Uh, who the fuck do you think you are to judge me for having a Harley, dude? Do I know you personally? It wasn't at you. It's a fucking joke. This is the problem, right? You say, who the fuck am I? Get over yourself. Who the fuck are you? It's that simple. This wasn't directed at you. I did a video called Two Strokes a Wank and went re went, two strokes a shite, went through the, re the problems. It was just a title to highlight what's wrong with the two-stroke design. Why it isn't perfect. Because if it was perfect, then there would be no four strokes. Then I did a video after that of why four strokes are shite. And the problems with them. Yes, they solve some of the issues with the two-stroke, but there are other problems that are not as powerful for their weight, so on and so on and so on and so on. Then I did why wankles are shite, stuff like that. And there was a lot of guys in the wankles were shite video who says, yeah, we know they are, but we love them anyway. And I was fine, you know, fine, why do I care? Good, I get that. Um, I've got a Harley Chop, a Yamaha Rat. Well, as soon as you say Yamaha Rat, well then, yeah, now your opinion is lower than one, at zero. And a Honda Pan. I'm a biker and have been longer than you have been alive. I love that. That means fucking nothing. You know what I mean? It, it means nothing, does it? Henry VIII is older than all of us. So he's dead. You know what I mean? And then the following day, he puts up another comment. Because uh, I said, stop being so fucking sensitive. And then the contradiction of this this version's comment corner came along. I'm not sensitive in the least. Right, so to say you are not sensitive in the least is to say you are not sensitive basically at all. I get more than a little pissed off. Well then, there you go then, right? <laughs> Straight away you're sensitive. <laughs> by generalisations about bikers in general. Look, <laughs> generalisations about bikers in general. That is the whole point. A generalisation, right, is like, it's a generalisation. That's it. It doesn't, it's not defined, it's not specifically saying that one or that one. It's a general scope of the things. Like saying women, and you'll be fucking probably guilty of this yourself, the guy who left this comment, what's his name? I'm not even saying that. Um, <laughs> Why? Because I don't understand what it means. It's a weird little... Just say Sedulius Dabbler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you're probably guilty of this saying women can't drive, right? It's a generalisation. And then you see that, what's her name, that Abby Bird off the Grand Tour. She can fucking drive better than fucking probably everyone who's ever watched any of my videos. You know what I mean? It's a generalisation. <laughs> and then if you asked Abby, she would probably say something like, yeah, most women generalising can't drive. Or park, at least park. Um, your comments your comments bout out Mr. Angry last night, a character that I have, for the most part, left behind as I've aged and mellowed. I'm going to remove my comments as it makes me look like a reactionary, hot-headed knob. He did, I think he removed his comment, but unfortunately I copy these things. <laughs> He's basically <laughs> admitting the fact that he got too tetchy about it, you know, which is fine, you know, it, and, and uh, you know, hats off to him for saying, I am not that sensitive, although I'm being sensitive about it, regardless. This is Aiden, Aiden S, this is brilliant, using the R word is not cool, that's the word retard, or as Tim likes to say, retard. <laughs> Bikers also have children with special needs. I love when people say this. Uh, maybe use a different word. One, it's a word, not a, a different child. You know what I mean? The other thing is, is bikers also have children with special needs. Bikers also have needs. Bikers are different than people. There are people. And there are, are fucking vegetarians oh. and vegans. And then there are bikers. We're not different people. Everyone's people. There are people who've started riding a bike, been called bikers, and then quit doing it. There are people who don't ride bikes yet, who might be in their 30s, who then will then later become riders. 
they it's just a fucking mode of transport <laughs> for god's sake <laughs> apart from car wankers <laughs> uh, the badger's time. ass. i do love that ride height is measured with the wheel at full extension no it's not if you're trying to calculate sag and droop and stuff like that then yes with the wheels hanging in the wind, and not to forget, you need to pull or push down on the wheel to take into account for the top of the top out springs. No, ride height is when you are sat on the bike. That's its ride height. It's that simple, and it changes depending on the preload versus the mass of the rider. Anyway, love these comments. All oh, right, so this is. Jean Simon Canard or Chinard. Chinard? Chinar. Chinard. <laughs> Chinard. Yeah, we'll go with that. Chinard. <laughs> First of all, Scotty Kilmer is one of the best mechanics in the world. <laughs> Love it. Second, the package says not to use for braking systems is because the company wants to avoid lawsuits if a twat like you not knowing what to do. No, 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 no. You're right, they want to avoid lawsuits because those fittings will fail and people will die. So to mitigate that, they put a warning saying, do not use these for fucking brake lines because they are not fit for purpose. He is also using the fittings to drag the brake line through and he is clearly not making connections to the system. Did you watch the video? He cuts the material altogether, there is no problem with that. Third, your video explaining compression is misleading. I do not have so much time to argue with you in fact, with your infect video, but you should review it more. Fourth, Scotty Kilmer will not get anyone killed. I have flagged your video to YouTube for misleading title and for defama de defamation. Defamation, you dickhead. And number two is, I'm sure you can't, fl you can't flag it for defamation. Whatever. David Stevenson. This is a good one because this was about the Yamaha studs and the nuts, which weirdly enough I have here. Um, why would you doubt the engineers at Yamaha, Matt? The bolts in question are ISO fine thread, high tensile bolts and nuts, studs, but anyway, which have a far greater strength to hold than a normal ISO 1.25 standard bolt and nut. But you know what I, you know that I'm sure. You cannot get accurate torque readings doing it like that in stages you need to do it after initial hand tight in one action which is nonsense you are making a simple exercise rather difficult why further to what i mention actually before we go any further he says about doing it in stages this is a um, section from a yamaha manual i think this is the yz 2450 f uh, this says head stud stuff like that studs uh, measure, me, tightening them down in stages but anyway <clears throat> that's for a different purpose that's so your cylinder goes down level but there is nothing wrong with having a final torque spec if you look in Mazda's Wankel video, uh, manuals and stuff they tell you to do the torque spec in sequence yeah I will go into why and I'll actually show, I've got a demo ready for it, not right now but I've got a demo ready to show you why Further to what I mentioned earlier, your channel has been slowly destroyed and you cannot or do not want to see it by a certain few of your followers. You will be coming to a time when everything you say will include the word Dell. This is about mechanics, not another YouTuber. Dude, it's, it's about what I define it, what it's about, not fucking you. I love when people tell me what my <laughs> channel is about or they tell me what I meant or what I should be saying or my, when they tell me my opinion, that's the best one. <laughs> Uh, this is about mechanics, not another YouTuber and how he wants to do things. Get a grip and use your energy wisely. Um, no, the question, getting back to the actual comment, the question, the reason why I questioned the torque settings for these is because the size of these nuts and the size of this thread compared to other bikes of similar power is huge. I was just asking, I, I just bringing up a point of why this is like this it, it was a, it's a still a mystery to me exactly why they've gone for such high torque settings but they have uh, and we're gonna, there's another video coming soon about Yamaha 
Uh, John Young, I've done this repair using a spark plug repair sleeve. They come in different sizes. Ensure your values are out of the way. Uh, va oh, ensure your valves are out of the way before tapping. I also, so this is about when Kilmer, Scotty Kilmer, tapped a thread hole and then blew the chips out the spark plug. I, <laughs> so let's start again. I've done this repair using a spark plug repair sleeve. They come in different sizes. Ensure your valves are out of the way before tapping. I also filled the cylinder with shaving cream. Yes. <laughs> before tapping the damaged hole. Crank the engine to blow the shaving cream and aluminium shavings out. Install spark plug repair sleeve. Install spark plug, uh, spark plug and drive. Who the fuck put shaving cream? Gillette's the best a spark plug can get. This is the missing form, uh, the missing form fryer. I do like that name. Well done. Uh, this is just a little uh, one he put in. The workshop at the workshop track days will be banned by 2025, so best get a lick, get a lick on sun. I asked him, "What do you mean they'll be banned by 2025?" He was just saying, uh, he's, "You know the way things are going." I don't think they're. Gonna, I literally asked him, saying, "Do you know something I don't like? Our track day is going to be banned by 2025." Let's hope not. Let's hope the people who own Brands Hatch <laughs> and other places don't. Uh, Peter T, this is this is never replace your tyres. This is the 303 uh, milk. <laughs> That's what the name of the video is. Why all that foul mouth? Adds nothing to what you have to share. It is a real turn off. Obviously, this guy was beating one off, and when I swear, it turns him off. <laughs> eh, great. That one's boring. We're not going to read that. It's too long. Tech skills. I love it when people name their channel after something like that. The workshop. No, I am an adult. Oh, he was on about... I think this is another guy who was on about swearing, because there's a lot of these. That's empty. Fuck well. Um, no, I'm an adult. You wish to convey your point in the video, but do so in a very unprofessional manner by cussing so much. I do like this because at least he gives context. And a lot of people, these knobheads who want to say something, um, don't give context. So, I don't know where in YouTube's terms of service or guidelines or anything they say that this has to be professional if you look at the most prevalent youtubers on youtube they are anything but <laughs> but anyway the video could have been three minutes shorter in length without the unnecessary expletives this was the first video of yours that i watched i don't know if the rest of your account is similar to this posting if so then i will definitely won't be watching any of your others oh really but you've got tech skills. That's your name. Bloody wind. Fucking fans. Bastards. Cunt. Kent. Kent. Remember, we're replacing the word. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I replaced the word. I said cunt instead of saying Kent. <laughs> hey. Sick of these clickbait titles. I do love this. This is from Sean O. Nilbud. Nilbud. I don't know how you'd say that in French. Or oh, Nilbud. A Nilbud? A Nilebud? Nile. I oh, fucking don't know. Nile bird. I tried. The video was called, get this, Kawasaki Z9 Broken Bolt Removal. <laughs> In which, in that video, I remove a broken bolt from the Z9. <laughs> so my, I'll put them my reply up as well. I said clickbait. Do you even know what clickbait means? Title equals Kawasaki Z9 broken bolt removal. Then I put, is it a Kawasaki? Yes. Is it a Z9? Yes. Is it a broken bolt? Yes. Was it removed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put, have you suffered from a recent head injury or something? <laughs> Fucking Nora. Uh, last fan standing nine nine nine. When is the last time you change your coolant? You should test if your amp it, it with your amp meter, or just change it all together. Also buy some coolant additives that reduce the hindering heat by twenty percent. I don't know if that was a joke or if he's just stupid. So I put that in here. This is. 
Ducati low end torque. This is the Testa Strata. We were talking about port sizes. So John O says you can't compare the size of the intake with the valve area without the valve in it. Well, you take your measurements, and I did that, and in the video I do say that. The valve only opens a few millimetres, that was the valve lift. So you're not getting 25 square centimetres of flow area. Yes, you are, you measure the skirt around it, fucking you know. The flow through the valve has more to do with the valve lift than the diameter of the valve. So if I have a valve diameter of one millimetre, but have a valve lift of 20 centimetres, yes. <laughs> That's, that has no no effect on flow. <laughs> a valve that only opens one millimeter isn't going to flow nearly as much as if it opens three millimeters. Yes, but you missed the other half of that equation, you fucking moron. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Eh. Right, so this is Terry Zach. So Terry Zach is a mechanical engineer with 30 years of experience. Let's see. The case you brought up about the Nissan engine which is the variable compression engine with variable mechanical compression engine was not the case you were discussing see there you go this is someone who is telling me what, you what I mean yeah if the dynamic compression was bollocks not bollocks as you contend then why has VVT become so what so widespread in use over the last 20 years or so your VVT is variable valve timing, not variable compression ratio. I don't know how you can't read. Is it that or is that all bullocks too? Without any consideration for dynamic compression ratio, VVT would be useless. VVT actually usually is lower down in the RPM and it goes back to normal cam profiling um, when you get into high RPM. Depends on the engine before someone goes mental. That can be switched backwards and forwards. In other words, it can be used over the entire rev range. Um, different valve lifts at different RPM, stuff like that. Um, but we're talk you're talking about charge density, not compression ratios. Compression ratios. Compression. Ratios. Ratio. Right? It's this bit that defines what it is. This could be pressure. Right, it's not that, it's this, right, it's the ratio bit. It could be compression location, geography, it could be compression rate, it could be anything. No, the ratio defines what we're talking about. We're talking about the compression and the ratio from bottom dead centre to top dead centre, or from basically your sweat volume, no, not your total volume, to your clearance volume. It is a ratio of the two. To have a dynamic one, you'd either have to lift the head or change where bottom dead centre and top dead centre are relative to each other. While the engine is running, that would be dynamic compression ratio. And then he says, I thought you'd have more res I thought you'd be more respectful of a valid consideration being brought up. Food technology question mark. I'm a mechanical engineer with 30 years experience. It's just a shame you don't know what the fucking hell you're talking about, isn't it? David Stevenson says, the young man in question has shown that he does not have an ability to solve simple problems when he soon discovered that the sprocket bolts had run on the nuts, had nuts on the back side. He's talking about you. Yeah, I figured that. Discover, le discovery learning is the inbuilt human attribute for problem solving in real time. Never heard that one before. My students learn far faster when they are praised for their abilities, not scorned for their mistakes, which makes Matt's teaching skills well below par. You are a cruel twat, Matt. You could have at least shown him how to use a plain drift to tap it through until there was enough axle to grab a hold of. Instead, you wanted to be to be little him and his fairy-like hands. <laughs> Dude, I... he, he belittles you and then says with his fairy-like hands. Can I, can I chip in on No, this? can you shut the fuck up? Right? This has got to be the worst tuition I have ever seen in my entire life. When he worked out that the nut was on the back of the sprocket studs, you never gave him any praise for using his own initiative. It's called seeing. And the fact of the matter is, how many times have I told you, look first? About a million. Billions of times, isn't it? Stick to taking the piss which you think you're good at. Hang about. He said, he's just said, stick to taking the piss. 
we are taking the piss out of you because you can't see there's nuts on the back. Make your fucking mind up. David Stevenson, make your fucking mind up. You're either saying all you want to do is belittle Isaac with his fairy soft hands. That's belittling me. That's a contradiction. <laughs> and then he says, <clears throat> stop taking the piss out of him. Why don't you just get back to taking the piss out of him? <laughs> Which he just did. <laughs> right, that's it for now. There's actually more, there's actually a lot more, but we can only do this for so long. How long has this been going on for? 47 minutes, fuck it out. Oh, that makes sense, I'll see you a bit. <laughs>